All right, so Thor Love and Thunder is available now in theaters, and this is my spoiler review. So if you don't want any spoilers for Thor Love and Thunder, then this might not be the video for you. But wait, 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 before you go, this episode, or not episode, but this video is sponsored by Audible. And if you don't know, Audible has the best platform when it comes to audiobooks, podcasts, originals, guided meditation, and sleep sounds. And uh, personally, I use sleep sounds every night, and I'm not much of a reader, but I am a listener, so I listen to audiobooks occasionally. And uh, guided meditation, not quite my thing, but podcasts for sure. And uh, they got all that kind of stuff, and it's awesome. And right now, if you go to audibletrial.com slash popculturepodcast, you can get yourself a 30-day free trial of Audible Premium Plus, which will give you one credit or two for Prime members. And basically, you can use those credits towards any of their premium selections. Mainly, that goes for their audiobooks. So if there's a book you've been meaning to read, but you're not much of a reader like me, then go ahead and go listen to it. Um, I mean, who doesn't know about Audible at this point? A lot of people are just like, oh, audiobooks. But like, like I said, there's a lot of other things on there too. Podcasts, originals, they have great originals on there. Meditation, sleep sounds. I mean, sleep sounds, I cannot sleep without sleep sounds every night. So they got something for everybody on there. And like I said, that is audibletrial.com slash popculturepodcast to get yourself that 30-day free trial of Audible Premium Plus. Thank you very much to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now uh, let's get into the spoiler review. And once again, for those of you who don't want any spoilers for Thor Love and Thunder, I suggest you click off the video now. So, sorry for the chair squeak there, but um, I basically have notes um, in order of how things happen for the most part. Uh, I'm not going to touch on every single aspect of this film. Uh, if you want my review for Thor Love and Thunder, go listen to my non-spoiler review. I'll be talking about certain things I did and didn't like and, you know, getting specific about certain things um, like I couldn't in that video. But for the most part, this is kind of just going to be a breakdown mostly. Maybe not a breakdown because I don't know enough about the comics to actually be able to break down every aspect of every character and every little Easter egg. But I wrote down what I could what I could retain and the, the stuff I would be able to talk about. So, yeah, let's start at the very beginning before the movie even starts. The Marvel Studios logo has been updated and I saw Moon Knight on there. We saw Moon Knight in the Marvel Studios logo for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. But now we can see Miss Marvel there as well, which I thought was really cool. Um, and then we start off the film with Gore traveling through the desert with his daughter. Uh, his daughter ends up dying and then a god shows up and... Gore heads over there, he's like eating all the fruit and stuff, and the god's like, look at this little this little rat just eating all my fruit. Um, and then he's like, oh my god, we've been waiting for you. Is uh, is now the time for my eternal reward or whatever? And he's like, there's no eternal, et eternal reward. And it's like, we're just celebrating because we just killed this dude who was about to kill all the gods with, I think it's called the Necro Sword, but I'm probably completely wrong there. Um, I'm just going to refer to it as the Necro Sword, or just the sword. Um... But yeah, basically that's sitting there, and uh, he ends up taking off his little his little uh, necklace that probably has the, the symbol for that god. He's like, I renounce you, and the god tries to kill him, but then the necro sword kind of speaks to him and ends up in his hand. He ends up killing that god and gets possessed, basically, and now he is on a mission to kill all the gods. So, yeah, even though he doesn't really, I mean, they show that he killed a lot of them, but at the same time, like... They don't really show him killing them, which I kind of wanted, but I don't know. Whatever. Um, yeah, let me see here. Uh, basically, like in Thor Ragnarok, we had Matt Damon and another actor. I don't know the actor's name, but I think he's actually related to Chris Hemsworth. They have them, you know, playing out the events of Thor The Dark World. In this, they have actors playing out the events of Thor Ragnarok. They have a scene with Odin and Loki and Thor where Odin passes away, and then Hela shows up, and who is playing Hela in this this play adaptation of Thor Ragnarok? It is Melissa McCarthy. I actually kind of had that spoiled for me, because I think it was listed on IMDb, but um, it's still funny to see here. A lot of people got a really good reaction out of that. Everybody actually recognized her underneath the costume and the makeup. I know I would, but, you know, some people don't have the, the movie knowledge I do, where I can just recognize most actors, but, um, yeah, that was that was pretty funny there. And basically Asgard is now like a tourist attraction, new Asgard that is. And they got like cruise ships lined up along the uh the coast there. They have all sorts of different shops. They have like a an ice cream parlor parlor. 
forget exactly what it's called, but you know, it has like the the infinity gauntlet there with the infinity stones, and it was like a play on the infinity stones. But um I actually had a fun idea for a Marvel themed like coffee shop and I would sell scones and call them infinity scones. Still think that's a great idea, but um yeah, well, guard the Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor are on a different pla uh, different planet. They end up needing his help, and so he uses Stormbreaker literally as a witch would use like a flying broom. He's just flying on Stormbreaker like a witch, and I thought that shit was hilarious. Um, you know, it was cool to see Thor fighting here, especially in the beginning. Um, they kind of have a little, a little montage of him getting back in shape, and you know, Gore or not Gore, but um, Korg talking about him in general to like a group of kids or whatever, but um. Yeah, he does that a few times in the movie, kind of narrating a little bit, which I thought was fun. But I forgot to mention here, uh, in Asgard, New Asgard, the huge tourist attraction that it is, who's working there? It is Daryl. And I don't think anybody in the theater, I didn't hear a single reaction to him. I'm sure a lot of people forgot about it, but Daryl was actually in, you remember those like Thor little YouTube videos like where was Thor during Civil War and he was just roommate uh, a roommate with this this dude Daryl and that was him and then also for Thor Ragnarok they did one where like Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster was was his roommate and stuff oh my god it was so funny and I was so excited to see Daryl in here I've had this idea for the longest time where it's like Daryl Corgan Meek and it's set up like the office in a way it's like one of those multi-camera sitcoms without the laugh track and it just stars Daryl, Korg, and Meek just, like, living in an apartment together. I, I thought that would be hilarious, honestly. We need something like that in the MCU. Um, that should be the next show. Have a have a, have a a Marvel show in the style of The Office. I think it would do so well, honestly. I think a lot of people are thinking right now, like, oh, my God, they should do that. But, um, yeah, to get to some uh, kind of disappointing stuff here, Guardians aren't really in this movie a whole lot. I mean, I was... Not expecting them to be in the whole thing, but they were barely in it at all, and I would have liked to see a little bit more from that. But another kind of sad, maybe not disappointing thing, but like a sad thing for sure. Uh, we find out that Jane, Jane Foster, has stage four cancer. Uh, we get a little cameo from Darcy showing up at the hospital to support her later on when she goes home. There's a message on her computer from Dr. Eric Selvig. Uh, basically saying like, oh, all these tests, they keep coming back the same. I'm sorry, Jane, if you ever need somebody to talk to, let me know. But um, yeah, uh, Jane's just sitting there reading something and then she hears this noise from a book and then you can kind of hear the Mjolnir sound. And so it's like Mjolnir calling to her. She ends up in New Asgard. Uh, she goes up to the Mjolnir kind of uh, display that they have and it starts shaking and spinning around a little bit. And then that's pretty much all you see. Uh, you can assume what happens there. Uh, and then when Thor shows up again and on New Asgard, when Gore is there attacking with the shadow monsters, um, you know, you finally get Thor and Jane reunited. He doesn't realize it's Jane at first because she has the helmet on. But a really cool thing that she can do with the hammer, now that it's like broken but reassembled, she can actually re-break it while it's flying through the air and use the shards to hit the enemy and then have it all come back and reform, which I thought was really cool. The disappointing thing there is they only did it once in the movie from what I saw. So I was like, that's something they should continue to use. That's pretty awesome. But um, yeah, finds out it's Jane. Has a bunch of flashbacks and stuff. And it's just like, oh. And then Korg kind of narrates their whole relationship. Things we actually didn't see in the Thor movies. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. One scene of them like rollerblading and he has Mjolnir just like pulling them. I thought that was so hilarious. Um, but showing that they actually are a really good couple and were really cute together. But kind of had some some issues throughout the relationship where they were just like, I'm scared of losing you. So it's like, I'm feeling distant. I mean, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Um, Gore ends up getting cornered by Valkyrie, Jane and Thor and ends up disappearing. They think he's running away, but no, the shadow monsters are basically taking all the kids, running them up and kidnapping them essentially. And that is all because he needs something to lure Thor to the shadow realm get him to give him Stormbreaker somehow and use the bifrost to open up a portal to eternity which we find out a little bit later but um yeah before or not yeah before you know the whole shadow realm stuff they end up going 
I'm just going to call it Olympus because I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically where all the gods are and where Zeus is, played by Russell Crowe, which I thought was hilarious in here. Um, you know, you have the whole scene of Thor, you know, the whole flick where he becomes naked. You actually see his, his butt cheeks in there. I thought that was funny. But, um, yeah, like all the women passed out and stuff, but then like a few seconds later, they were all standing up and fine. So I was like, eh, that was kind of bad editing and cutting there, but oh well. Um, it didn't take me out of the movie really, but yeah, they end up having this whole fight scene because at first they wanted the, the, the God's help, but they were like, fuck that dude. And, um, uh, then he's like, all right, can I have your lightning bolt? And he's like, no, fuck that dude. And, uh, then he's like, all right, well, you're going to have to stay here. Cause I don't want you to lead gore to us. And then they end up fighting them. Um, Zeus throws the, the lightning bolt at Korg. Korg falls apart into a million pieces. We all think he's dead. And in that moment, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, you motherfucker. And so when Thor grabbed that lightning bolt after Zeus threw it at him and threw it right through his chest, I was like, yeah, fuck you. I literally audibly said, and I was sitting next to two strangers. I was like, fuck you. And uh, it was kind of awkward, but oh, well, um, <laughs> it was how I was feeling in the moment. But yes, yeah, so and now they have the lightning bolt and uh, Korg is fine. Basically, it's just uh, he said that uh, I think his his race is called the Cronians. And basically, uh, the only part of them that's alive is their face and their mouth. So that's kind of funny there. Um, so you just kind of get just the Korg face for a little while there. Um, he, he regrows back and meets a nice guy named, uh, oh shoot, I can't remember his name now, but, um, I, I'm guessing either Korg is gay or that's just how the race is that like, there's no women in his race. And so that's just how they do it. But, um, I was like, man, people are going to be upset over that. They're going to be like, Korg is gay. Oh, my God. Now you have Valkyrie, and now you have, ugh. It's just like, shut the fuck up, people. But, uh, yeah, let me see here. One of the kids actually taken from Asgard is Astrid, the son of uh, of Heimdall. And he named himself Axel after Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses, obviously. Uh, which, by the way... Sweet Child of Mine gets played three times in this movie. I'm like, isn't there any other good music you can play? I mean, I understand completely playing it once, maybe twice, but three times was a little excessive. I'm just like, don't Guns N' Roses have, like, at least three or four different songs that are, like, super popular? Why can't you use those or any other, like, kind of music like that? But it doesn't bother me that much. Um, yeah, while well, they're fighting Gore in the Shadow Realm, which I thought it was really cool seeing all the, like, black and white. Um, and then, like, when they're using the powers, it, like, colors them. I thought that was really cool. But, um, yeah, Valkyrie ends up getting hurt. I thought she was going to die for a second, but this movie, the stakes aren't really that high, honestly. Nobody really dies in here except Gore. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they're fighting him or whatever. And they need to go back home. And so Gore ends up getting Stormbreaker because, like, Thor's holding on to it and he uses the whole shadow stuff to, like, pull it down or whatever. So now he has Stormbreaker. He ends up going to the portal, or not the portal, but the gateway to eternity. Has all the kids there. Um, while Thor, Jane, and Valkyrie are on Earth, Valkyrie and Jane are staying behind. Jane's in the hospital. Thor's like, I gotta go do this. Jane, you stay here because if you do that again, you're gonna die. And I don't want you to do that because I love you. And, um, Obviously, she's going to come fight, but he shows up there. He has the lightning bolt, and he gives all the kids powers, temporary powers, so they can fight. One kid has a freaking, you know, powered freaking teddy bear, which I thought was hilarious. But just seeing the kids fight, like, I don't know if anybody's going to love that a whole lot. But personally, I thought it was really cool just seeing the kids fight and be little badasses and stuff and have the powers of Thor. thought that was so, so cool. But um, Stormbreaker does end up opening that portal to eternity. Jane shows up to fight. They end up uh, destroying that sword or whatever. But, yeah, by the way, the kids end up back safe home before anything else happens. And then they're in that weird eternity realm that kind of reminded me of, um, you know, where they were when they got the Soul Stone in Endgame and in Infinity War. Um, but, yeah, basically there's this weird figure. Looks like the universe, like a person made out of the universe. At first, when I saw that statue, I thought it was Galactus, but I think I could be completely wrong. I probably am wrong on that, but um, maybe Eternity is an actual being in the Marvel comics. Don't know for sure. Definitely got to wait for that new Rockstars breakdown because it's going to answer, answer a lot of questions that I have for sure. But yeah, um, sorry, Peter's starting to shut off here, but 
yeah, uh, Thor gets through to him because throughout the whole movie, they're like, what do you think is going to happen when he gets a wish? Like this Gore the God Butcher gets a wish. What do you think he's going to do? He's going to wipe out all the gods with one wish. But Thor gets through to him and he's like, you can just bring your daughter back. That's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, this is going to be another multiverse of madness situation where it's just like, hey, Wanda, why don't you just get it, go to the universe where the kids don't have a mom and just be the mom for them there? Or, you know, <laughs> and I was watching... um how it should have ended for that earlier and they're like um they did the whole meme where it's like black bolt tell them tell uh tell her how you can find her kids and she's like our right, black bolt's like uh uh ha have your own kids or or do adoption <laughs> or something like that it was really funny but um yeah i was like oh this is gonna be a whole nother multiverse of madness situation where all this could be resolved with a simple conversation and uh that's kind of how it is in the end, but at the same time, I think it works for the most part. Uh, Thor being able to actually get through to him. It was a little cheesy and on the nose, but oh well. Um, he, he wishes for his daughter back. And since he had that uh, that sword and the curse inside of him, it's slowly killing him. Same goes for Jane having the powers. Each time he, she uses it, it makes her even more weak. And uh, so Jane's dying, Gora's dying. And he's like, there's going to be nobody to take care of my daughter. But nope, Thor's going to be the one to take care of her now and basically be... Uh, and, you know, she calls her Uncle Thor. I don't know the exact name of her, but in the movie they just call her Love. Because at the very end, Corgis are like, and they call themselves Love and Thunder. So I was like, um, that's, that's kind of neat, but also kind of weird names. Thunder's kind of cool, but Love, it's kind of a weird name, to be honest. But, I mean, you do you. Do you. I actually know somebody named Love. Not personally, but yeah uh so yeah uh let me see what am i missing here um oh yeah i also mentioned here something i forgot to say by the way the fact that mjolnir and specifically stormbreaker have personalities in the f the film is really funny to me um let me see what else i have in my notes here i mean obviously jane dies she dies the same way that uh odin did turning into gold dust and i'll get to that in a bit here um yeah, so Thor's taking care of the kid. Jane dies. Uh, they call themselves Love and Thunder. All right, so we're getting to the uh, post credit scene and after credit scene. So the post credit scene, we see that Zeus is still alive. And uh, he'll probably end up being one of the villains of the next Thor film. Because I'm pretty sure they confirmed that they're already making another one. As they should, honestly. I think Thor is definitely one of the best characters right now in terms of, like, solo movies. But, yeah, um... Also, Hercules shows up, and uh, he's like, all right, I'm going to need you to fight him. So it's probably going to be more Hercules being the villain of the next film, but I'm sure Zeus is going to have a hand in that too. Also, I don't know for sure if he got his lightning bolt back. I don't think so. Thor probably still thinks he's dead, so uh, he probably still has it somewhere, but I'm sure he's going to be wanting that back too. And then for the after credit scene, we see Jane entering Valhalla, and who is there to greet her? But Heimdall himself, he says, thank you for keeping my son safe, Axel, Astrid, um, one of the kids that was kidnapped by Gore. And uh, and then it says, Thor will return. And part of me is like, I mean, obviously it's going to be Chris Hemsworth Thor, but also they didn't specify, so maybe Natalie Portman can show up again in a future movie. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see Valhalla, honestly, and see her interact with Odin there and different other gods honestly not every god deserves to be there the god at the beginning that was like about to kill gore um i saw him turn into gold dust and i was like that dude does not deserve to be there but uh they got some jankity rules i guess but yeah that's basically all i have to say in terms of uh spoilers breaking down pretty much every important part of the movie i would say i'm sure there's a lot i missed still but yeah for this spoiler review i mainly just wanted to get into certain aspects of the movie um, because when it comes to spoilers, I'm just like, all right, I want to say everything that would be considered a big spoiler. I just want to say everything, talk about the entire movie, um, without having to like be vague about it and not say specific things. That's basically just what I want to do here. I want to like talk about each aspect of the movie and slightly break it down a little bit, but mostly just show how much I remember it, I guess. Um, that's, that's part of it, but overall, not a bad film. If you want to hear my, well, I'll just say my ranking now. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10 and, uh, in the tier list, I'd put it at a B, but yeah, I mean, it's a pretty solid film. I'm going to be watching again one more time in a couple weeks or so, but, 
Uh, like I said in my non-spoiler review, I don't like it as much as I like Thor Ragnarok. I do like it more than Multiverse of Madness if we're comparing other Marvel movies to each other, especially ones that come out this year. But um, pretty, pretty solid film. I had fun with it for sure. I mean, if you watch my non-spoiler review, I, I highly recommend you do. I get into more detail about certain characters and how I feel about them without obviously going to spoilers, but, um, is there anything in particular here? I, I think I basically covered everything, so I'm just, I'm just gonna call it. If it's not good enough for you guys, if you have more questions for me about specific things, go ahead and comment down below. Um, I'm guessing you've watched the movie if you're watching the spoiler review, so let me know if there's certain things you didn't like, things you did like about the movie, certain funny moments that you, you want to share with me that you really liked, um, or if you have any questions for me about what I thought about certain things in the movie, definitely comment down below. Like I said, a spoiler review, so you're able to talk about spoilers in the comments. Um, anybody who's here and hasn't watched the movie, just got all of it spoiled for you, bro. But, um, yeah, uh, leave a like on the video. Like I said, comment with your thoughts and all that. Any questions, uh, hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. What will the next upload be? It'll probably be my review of The Boys Season 3, which might be a little bit late, to be honest, but um, I'll get to it. There's just so many things to do right now with Thor coming out. It's like, oh my god, there's just so much going on. But um, yeah, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Pop Culture Podcast. Um, like I said before, audibletrial.com slash popculturepodcast. Get yourself that 30-day free trial of Audible Premium Plus. And also right now on my Tee Public store, if you go to the link in the bio of my Instagram page at Pop Culture Podcast, it'll take you to a page of links. Hit that Tee Public button. I have a new design available right now that is actually a, uh, it's Mjolnir. It has the cracks on it in honor of the new movie. And then it has a little, uh, a little name tag that says, hi, my name is Jonathan. Because if you haven't seen the Paul Rudd clip, there's a clip from interviews from Ant-Man and the Wasp and a couple of the actors were like, all right, how do you say Mjolnir? And they're like, Majolnir, and they're like, Molnir. And then Paul Rudd's just like, Jonathan? And so I was like, that'd be a really funny idea for a shirt, especially since I'm trying to make like a shirt inspired by Thor Love and Thunder, because, uh, let me see if I have it over here. I think I do. Is this it? Uh, let me see, yes. So I actually made a shirt in honor of Multiverse of Madness when that was coming out. And it'll actually not be available too much longer on my Tee Public store, but that's what that looks like. Um, for each release, like big Marvel release, I might try to make like a cool design to go along with it. Nobody really buys them, but it's fun for me to do, and maybe somebody will at some point. But right now with the uh, the Mjolnir Jonathan design on my uh, Tee Public store, all those merchandise items will be 35% off with that design only uh, for the next couple of days or so, maybe, maybe one more day. Um, day and a half maybe so on there they have t-shirts which with 35 percent off they'd be about 14 dollars. so not bad for a t-shirt at all they also have stickers magnets phone cases laptop cases they got mugs they have um, notebooks they have tank tops hoodies sweatshirts regular shirts baseball shirts like baseball t-shirts um, they have baby clothes kids clothes they have all sorts of stuff on there so like I said, with that design only, every merchandise item will be 35% off for the next day and a half or so. So definitely go pick one of those merchandise items up. I would appreciate it so much. There's also like three other designs available, including that Doctor Strange design that I showed you. But um, I would very much appreciate it if you wouldn't pick something up there. So that is all I got for this video. Like I said, in the next video, I should be reviewing season three of The Boys. And uh, that's all for today. I will see you in the next one.